Dynamic DNS or DDNS is a method to automatically update a name server in the domain name system. It has a lot of use cases, but it is especially popular among home users. The reason is most home internet don't have the luxury of static IP address, which means yes, each time you will be allocated a public IP address, but it's not guaranteed is the same as the one you got last time. For most home usage, it's not a problem at all, but if you happen to provide services from your home to outside world, that may be very troublesome. If the IP address is changed and your domain name is still pointing to the old IP address, that means downtime of your services. That's why many home users need a reliable way to update the IP address for their domain name. To achieve that, DDNS can be used. In this video, I'm going to use two example domain names. The first one registered with CodeDaddy. I'm going to manually maintain the address record to update the IP address. And then I will use one which is registered with Cloudflare. I will use Ubiquiti Gateway's DDNS functionality to automatically update the address record. Later, we will dig deeper to understand how the dynamic DNS is implemented within Unify Gateway. Okay, so first in the lower left part of the screen, I show you the GoDaddy DNS management. I have a domain name, but if I go to the DNS record section, you can see there are only three records here and they are all read-only. This is the default status. I don't have any custom record maintained yet. So at this moment, even the domain name itself doesn't have a IP address, let alone custom host name. So then in the lower right, let me dig the domain name itself to see what's the result. In the output, you can see even though answer number is zero, it does have a authority section and the record has the type SOA. SOA stands for start of authority. It's exactly the same as you see here in the DNS record. This record has NS type for name server. So basically this result means yes, your domain name is registered, but you even haven't maintained the IP address yet. The DNS name resolution fails for this particular domain name. So now let me add a custom record in the GoDaddy website. Let's see later what will happen. Click this button, add a new record. Then for type, let me say A. A means address. A record is also called hostname record. For example, the most common one, www dot something, right? So the www needs a A record. Okay, here for name, let's say test. Then for value, let me simply use 8888. And then for now, I don't care about the TTL. Save, it's added. Now I have four DNS record and the very first one can be edited. The value is 8888. Go back to the client, run the exact dig command again. Nothing's changed. The reason is I'm still digging the original domain name instead of the test dot something because I only maintain a, a record for this test host name. That's why if I dig the original domain name, nothing will be changed. Then let me dig the test dot followed by the original domain name. Let me run it. I got one answer back and this is the IP address. It's successful. In this way, my test dot something works already because I manually go to GoDaddy where I registered the domain name and then I maintain a, a DNS record for this test host name and I give it a assignment of the IP address. You cannot really rely on this approach if your IP address change frequently. The quality cannot be guaranteed. Downtime will happen very frequently. One to another domain name I registered with Cloudflare. On the screen, you can see the 
DNS records maintenance screen for my domain name. And my domain name is called a zone. For this zone, you can see Cloudflare has the default name servers available here. These are pre-existing. Now, instead of manually add a address record for test dot something, let me go to Unified Network Controller to configure dynamic DNS. If I go to settings, internet for my primary one part, the advanced setting currently is auto. To enable dynamic DNS, I need to switch on menu, then see this option, I need to create new. And here I need to select a service because I'm using Cloudflare to register my domain name for dynamic DNS. Let me also choose Cloudflare. Here the zone is my existing domain name I registered with Cloudflare. So let me input it. Then host name, just like previously for GoDaddy, we use test as an example, right? For this Cloudflare, let me still use test, which is the host name. Then here I need to provide a API token. Let me show you how to get this API token. In Cloudflare, go to your profile. Then in the left side pane, see this API tokens, click on it. We can create a API token here. Here I need to select a template. For my DDNS purpose, I simply need to add zone DNS. I use this template. Then for token name, let me name it as Unify DDNS. Then for permissions, the default one works for me. It says for zone DNS, I want to add it. And here for zone resource, I want to include the specific zone. Then let me select the zones. It should list the domain name you register with Cloudflare. So in my case, I only have one. Select it, then scroll to the end, click on continue to summary, and confirm the setting. I'm OK. Create token. Done. The token is created. Then I can copy it. Keep in mind, for security reason, this token will not be shown again. So make sure you note it down somewhere else. Otherwise, later, if you need a token, you forget it, you have to generate a new one. So we are done with the token generation in Cloudflare. Then let me go back to Unify Network Controller to paste the API token. Then Correct. See here, a new service line is added in Cloudflare. Let me go back to my DNS record. See here, we have a new DNS record created already, even though we haven't clicked the apply changes yet in Unified Network Controller. What's the DNS record? The type is A, address record, and the name, which is the host name, is test, just like what I input in Unified Network Controller, right? And then the content, I didn't set any content. The content was provided by Unify Gateway to Cloudflare through API calls. What's the content? It's the internet IP address of my primary one part. The proxy status, DNS only, TTL, author. So this is the effect of the DNS in Unify Network Controller. Let me apply changes anyway. Then just to validate the A record is effective, in the right side internet client, let me dig the original domain name first without the new test dot something. So similarly, zero answer, one authority, the DNS record is SOA, start of authority, and see the name server exactly the same as we see in the left side in Cloudflare, right? Nothing's changed about the IP address of the original domain name. However, if I dig test dot followed by the domain name, we got one answer and it's a A record for test dot something. The answer is the IP address of my primary one part. So it's completely successful and the dynamic DNS successfully created a A record in Cloudflare.
In the future, I get a totally different IP address from my ISP. I don't need to do anything. The system will automatically call the Cloudflare API by using the API token to update this zone with this host name with my one part IP address automatically. Now you see it works in action. In the lower left terminal, let me SSH into the Unify gateway. Let me first find out what process is running to support DDNS. Run ps command, try to find DDNS. Okay, there is one process, it's called inner die, and this is the configuration file it used, and it's binding to this Ethernet aid part, which is my primary one part. Okay, you may not be familiar with inner die. Here I'm showing you its GitHub source code page, and in the readme, you can see it's short for Internet Automated Dynamic DNS Client. It is a small and simple dynamic DNS client with HTTPS support. It's commonly available in many Linux distributions and is also used in off-the-shelf routers and internet gateways to automate the task of keeping your internet name in sync with your public IP address. Let's see what's configured in this configuration file. It's super simple. It simply configure the interface, which is my primary one part. Then it has the provider information. This is exactly the information I provided when I configure the dynamic DNS in Unified Network Controller. So this is the host name. My domain name or the zone is used as username during the API call. And then the API token I provided is used as password when it calls the service provider, which is Cloudflare. And if you are a very cautious person, you may not feel comfortable if you read this configuration file because it doesn't specify whether SSL is used when making the API call. Of course, you don't want your host name, domain name info, and API token information to be exposed in clear code on internet, right? Fortunately, if I show you this man page for inner dying configuration file, you can see this setting, secure SSL. By default, this setting is enabled because security matters, okay? Before ending this video, let me talk about a bug or something I don't like. So let me show you. Remember in Unify Network Controller, we configured this DDNS service provider. Let me click on it. Let's say now I want to change the host name. I'm okay with the testing result. Now I want to make it formal. So let me say www, okay, save it. Then if I go to Cloudflare, See what happened in the DNS record section. There are two A records now. Yes, the triple W was created, which is good, but our old test is still there. So basically in Unified Network Controller, when you change your host name in the DNS setting or even delete the existing setting, it doesn't do a good job when it comes to clean up. It will leave the record in the service provider, which is not good. So let me manually clean it up. Let me click on the test then remove it, type delete. So you know what, maybe, just maybe, it's due to this protection mechanism. During API call, Ubiquiti has hard time to delete a garbage record. I'm not sure, but anyway, let me delete it manually. Now it's clean up. Let me summarize the process. You have your home network. You run a unified gateway. And then you use a DDNS service provider. In this video, I use Cloudflare. At the same time, you register your domain name through another service provider. In my case, it's either GoDaddy or Cloudflare. As long as your DDNS service provider is able to handle the domain name provider, then you are good. Before your internet client can use the host name 
dot domain name to access your home server you need to first enable the setting in unified gateway to make it possible for the gateway to make api call to the ddns service provider so of course you need to do some preparation in the ddns service provider side first to get the api token once the api is called the ddns service provider will create a, a record in your dns authority name server automatically behind the screen with the host name domain name and your one port ip address you provided during the api call and then when any internet client wants to access the service provided from your home server they don't need to type in the ip address they simply use the fixed host name dot domain name and then any dns recursive name resolver should be able to reach out to the dns authority name server by using this a record to get the name resolved then your internet client will know the ip address it will be able to access the service provided by your home server okay this ends the video thanks for watching